from the second annual World Forum of Solar Future today. And today actually is the third day of the forum and the visit of uh, Solar Dubai. So first we visited Al Maktoum Solar Park, which uh, when built will be the largest solar project in the world, five gigawatt project. Then we visited Sustainable City and now we came here to Nur Solar Technology. And it's quite actually interesting because this is the baby of three of us, I would say, yes? In so, a way, yes. in a way, in a way. And I would like to start first uh, with uh, Tony, yes? Because uh, Tony, uh, you remember yesterday uh, you saw the very big logo of Solar Future Today and the name Solar Future uh, Today. Yes. And actually Tony was one of the persons who contributed to invention of this logo. And during the first day, we had our visionary influencers ceremony. Did you imagine before, you know, when we were sitting together during the nights, when you were explaining me what is the disruption, how does it work? Did you imagine that actually you would arrive to this point? Yes, um, you know, uh, solar is a disruptive technology and it's been going down in cost by 11% every year since 1970. You can pretty much predict where it's going to be and of course, I predicted where it was going to be now, and solar today in the desert, as we have seen, is the cheapest form of energy, period. I mean, it's cheaper than anything out there um, without subsidies today. So the disruption that we have been talking about for years is starting to happen. Um, and from here, it's like going to accelerate because it's already the cheapest form of energy, uh, both in the desert and on the rooftop uh, because the cost of solar is even falling below the cost of transmission. Um, and even in northern latitudes, solar is becoming the cheapest form of energy. So yeah, I mean, the predictions that we made about how solar was gonna eat everything, solar was gonna eat every other form of energy is starting to happen. Okay, Tony, you just said uh, that uh, you started you know, to refuse interviews. Yeah? You are speaking with Wall Street Journal, you are speaking with different televisions, but still you came here to support Solar Future Today. Why do you support Solar Future Today? Because Solar Future Today, I mean, we're, uh, this is a, a number of people, Hans Josef, yourself, myself, and uh, the people that have been supporting Solar Future Today um, have this passion about having this positive impact in the world uh, and making uh, solar energy and wind and electric vehicles and so on, uh, basically what it should be, the disruptive force that it is, um, which uh, is going to help us take the world to zero emissions in energy and transportation by 2030. And I think that this is a group that um, is spreading the word that's making it happening too. Okay. So now uh, let's speak with Hans Josef Fell, father of renewable energies. And as I always say, during our beautiful gala, yeah. that uh, we have the food actually thanks to this gentleman. So Hans Josef, how did you enjoy uh, our events here? And do you agree with uh, what Tony is saying? Yes, I agree completely. And we can see here in the United Emirates that Zola is even covering the oil companies not only oil companies, oil countries. Here in the United Emirates, we could see a lot business of oil, natural gas, even in coal. Some of them have plants in nuclear. That's not good. But we see what is invested is solar, is wind power. And we see that they begin now to achieve also all the benefits. We are standing here at new new factory and so we see that the countries want to have the benefits with the employment. Renewable energy brings a lot of employment and this is good for the nations here. Exactly. And actually we are a bit tired today, yes, after parties, but we also worked, yes, we had the strategy lunch with uh, Tony, with Hans Josef. It was very interesting because one of the next steps that uh, we will undertake is to make suggestions, proposals in terms of policy, exit strategies, transformation strategies, and also to have our own exponential S-curve scenario. 
So I would like to ask you, gentlemen, who would like to start first? How would you imagine cooperation on this? And how, what would you expect from the global industry leaders? You know, my think tank, RethinkX, um, has already done the rethinking transportation uh, study where we forecast that by 2030, 95% of all miles, uh, passenger miles, will be autonomous, electric, and on-demand, electric, by 2030. Um, and we're working on the follow-on to clean disruption, my book, uh, for power. And one of the things that we're doing that I didn't do before was not just to analyze the disruption, um, but also the implications for society, as Hans Josef is saying, the job generation, for instance, the positive externalities, um, having cheap and clean energy brings jobs and brings industry and so on, and also the choices that we need to make, the choices that we need to make as a society to make this happen, uh, take advantage of, of the upside and mitigate the downside. Um, and this is something that uh, we can do together, where we can work together. And ho hopefully, I mean, it would be such a pleasure for me to bring Hans Josef Fell to work with me in this project. Um, because together we are stronger. Of course, I mean, uh, w you know, the, 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 it would be such an honor because I can study disruption and I have and it works and I know how it works and the implications. And Hans Josef has been thinking about the implications and the choices that we need to make as a society, even beyond. I mean, when we get to zero emissions, which I expect by 2030, what do we do beyond that, right? And Hans Josef clearly has been thinking about it. We've been talking about it and that working together would be some awesome, really awesome. To do together also with the industry leaders. Of yeah? course, yeah, of course. Hans Josef, uh, do you agree with Tony? Yes, I agree completely. The industry leaders have to learn new lessons. In the past, it was okay to create big solar farms, big solar factories, big wind farms, hydro pump power stations and more. But the more and more the disruptive will come into the world, the faster it will grow. And we see at the moment already that in some nations, politicians are thinking about how to reduce the speed of renewables because they cannot see that we have the chance to solve all the problems with an high speed and the problems are a little bit we have to integrate all the renewables we have to balance the fluctuations what i hear from grid operators is they can't do it the integration and balance the fluctuations but we have all technologies we have the information technologies we have the uh, storage technologies we have the combination and so the industry leaders must learn first to lobby the public and the politicians to go faster with renewables than today and to implement immediately political framework that they could integrate all the systems. This means balancing is possible not only in the electricity sector, we must use it, the surplus from solar and wind in some times must flow to the electric cars, must go to the heating and cooling system, and the batteries have to store it that we have in not surplus times even as well solar and electricity and, and wind electricity and hydropower can help, bioenergy can help and geothermal. So the mix of renewables is important and so the investment should go more and more into localities where we have a hundred percent renewable investment that will cover all the time the all demand of all energies. That's important and now the time that we can convince all the industry leaders to go this way. Okay, so the last question actually, because we are always discussing between the industry, with the expert, policy makers, but besides you, there were also three people who received the awards, yes? yes. So it was Brita, chairwoman of uh, Miss World Solar. It was Pascal, who just finished amazing 3D IMAX movie about Solar Impulse, about Bertrand Picard and his story. And also Adam Hall, who is introducing solars to schools. And I think this is so important element, yes? That we should work, of course, on the arguments, but to sell those arguments through the sexy initiatives. And I believe that actually 
you were so excited when speaking yeah, about disruption, about policy, but you were even more, more excited when you were close to Miss Wolf Solar, yes? <laughs> Well, Brita is uh, an amazing person, um, someone who grew up in a yurt in Mongolia with barely two hours of electricity per day, and someone who wants to bring 100% power to everyone in Mongolia. Um, that's something to be admired. And um, we talked about actually doing a translation of clean disruption into Mongolian, uh, offering it for free so that everyone could um, have access to that information. Everyone could, uh, we can open people's, um, change the frame, right? By changing the frame, all the propaganda about solar being expensive and needing subsidies and so on. We are at the point where um, clean energy and clean transportation are cheaper, right? And, and it's getting cheaper and cheaper and more resilient more secure infrastructure. Um, so um, Breda is someone who understands that and wants to bring that back to Mongolia and bring make Mongolia 100% clean energy and transportation. So And also the, help us to be less boring, yes? Well, of course, less boring. I mean, uh, you know, you talk about energy and kilowatt hours and so on. Um, it, it is boring in a way, but um, but it, yeah, it's amazing to be surrounded by such great people who are so passionate about having a huge positive impact in the world. And what do you think, Councillor? It is important that we include all the people of the whole society. Most awarding are going to technology innovations, to economic success. It is important, yes, we have to highlight them. but. The transition, 100% renewables is much more. It is a cultural revolution. We have to take with us the whole society. And so it is good when we have leaders from other positions, film stars, sports stars, filmmakers, misses. Who believe. Yes, who believe on it and gives a message to the people. It's easier to get from Britta a message to the people go under renewables than from a technology freak. The technology freaks, they believe everything. But when a miss comes and when an, another one comes, that's important. So we should go on this way to integrate the whole society and we should find much more such people from outside of the technology level who want to lead the world that we have a fast track to 100% renewables. So let's invite Brita. So now we have actually, you know, the most exciting part of our solar city, Dubai solar city tour. And we are together with us, uh, Brita, chairwoman of Miss World Solar. Actually, Hans Josef is a star. Tony Siba is a star, but she was the most shiny star during our gala dinner. So, Brita, Tony and uh, Hans Josef were complimenting a lot about you, and also that you put your heart in the promotion of solar. And today you had opportunity also to see the solar companies. You were meeting last days solar leaders. You were also listening to the Hans Josef presentations and to uh, Tony Siba presentations. So, in two words, Brita, are you going? to be involved in solar or maybe you will be even more involved? We'll be more involved forever. forever. Why? Because this is the future. And I believe uh, I'm from Mongolia, right? So we should follow the solar, uh, don't use coal anymore. And through the Miss World Solar candidates, we will get into uh, different countries. Let, let's be clever and uh, Brita, I would like you to invite Hans Josef and Tony to <laughs> Philippines. <laughs> yes, I've been convincing them, I think, for the last two, three days. <laughs> but you're coming, yes? Um, you're inviting me to scuba dive in Cebu, Philippines. Who can say no to that? And exactly. I told him we can yeah. go diving with the treasure sharks That's and right. whale sharks. That's right. So. That's right. But yeah. also, we'll bring a chairman from around the world. Yes. Hans yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Philippines will be a good occasion to promote renewables by more and more people, as I told, from the cultural and others. And we should highlight also one awarding. 
the education. Adam Hall for the million stars. Education is so important for the world that the people learn the benefits of renewables. The world is polluted with fakes against renewables, driven by the protector of the old fossil and nuclear system. Therefore, education in schools for adults and others is very, very necessary. And so thank you to give the awarding to such a great spectrum of people who can all influence the world for a better world and a 100% renewable world. Okay, so thank you so much. And so let's join the process. Just Brita, uh, my last remark, Brita said that she believes in the future, but actually the future is today. Yeah. Solar future today.